Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we took a quick look at the time lapses being printed. Now, one of the things that I, I do want to note, uh, when I set forward and did the initial design, this, this was the design. Now, I haven't cleaned out the, the supports, but one of the things that I clearly missed in doing this is the actual clearance of this back bracket. So when I put this on here, as you kind of see, the antenna would run in. So th this was a clear miss. So I got all these measurements right. I got the hole right, everything. But, you know, this is just one of the dilemmas in 3D design. So what I did is I said, okay, I need to kick this out a little bit. So I quickly designed another one that moved this back. So you can see this one is further back. And works perfect, right? Well, then the problem became... When I went to put this in, because one of the things, as I mentioned, plastic expands, I couldn't fit this in without a lot of work to kind of clean this up. So, uh, again, this is a pretty easy print. Prints in less than an hour. It um, doesn't take a lot of material. So then what I did is I kicked it up and made it uh, far wider and, uh, you know, came out with this one, which really works great. So now I got the right back offset. I've got the good enough width that I can easily fit this in. And again, the idea is you have to tip it, so that's okay. I've got the bend so it kind of sits, can sit at an angle like that um, on, on the, the desk or angled uh, this. I got the screws in it. Now, the other thing notice that I did that I didn't show you is I've also put a relief to get a screwdriver in here so um, I can just slide the screw in and I'm going to use just a number four pan head uh, to bolt that in. However, one of the other things that I wanted to show you guys is when you do these 3D prints, as a static object, a 3D print's actually pretty good. But what happens is it builds it up. It does it layer by layer. So you get these striations, and the print is only as good as how the layers stick together. So one of the things is, is this in the field is going to take a lot of torque, and I'm going to have a big antenna hanging off this and moving around, and it's going to get bounced around in the field. So one of the things I want to do is make this really robust. And the way to do that is use some epoxy. So what I've done is I've got some uh, quick five minute epoxy here. Now it's not going to take a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up some real quick here. And I typically use these uh, pie plates as uh, uh, kind of like, you know, mixing areas plus uh, it handles all the drips. Now you aren't, you, you aren't going to need a lot of this and it's two parts 50-50. So I don't get too particular, just kind of measure it by eye. And again, I've used a five minute type because I've got very little patience. And then what I'm going to use is because they're cheap, I'm just going to use um, a Q-tip. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mix this up first and just kind of scoop this up. Mixing epoxy isn't too tough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this get this. And now what I want to do is just swab this on on the inside, kind of paint it around on the inside because the idea here is what I want to do is fill in the uh, the uh, various striations in this so again I'm just swabbing the inside you don't have to get too particular and after a while your q-tip will get pretty pretty nasty and you can just flip it over and use the other end. The biggest thing is these are far cheaper than if you buy a dedicated uh, brush. Make sure you get the top of it too, the top backs. And what will happen is this will kind of form an, uh, a very hard inner coating. Now the pieces too, I want to also get, get these uh, outer pieces too with a light coat just so it just creates a whole shell for it if you will. And I'm about done. Just get a little bit more here. I just want to make sure I get a little bit more. Now, you don't want to get too much on this, this outer piece um, because this is going to kind of hold up. And then what we're going to do is just make sure everything is um, set. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to come back and show you guys how to assemble this. Okay, so we set this up. I've installed the connector. Now, one of the other things that I noticed a little bit of a design uh, <clears throat> feature 
uh, this hole actually is the connector is in the way of the hole so I'll have to try to get at it from the side so what I've done is I've lined this up I've drilled a couple holes in the back of this I've disassembled this so the wire will go through this middle piece here the coax and then it'll slide down and then what I'll do is um, what I'll do is I'll take uh, some number four pan head screws about like this and because this is one of the reasons I made the uh, this little indentation is the idea is is that will allow uh, some extra room for the uh, pan head screw to go in and then that tightens into the plastic pretty nicely so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one and then uh, solder it in and we'll come back and take a look at it so here we are we've got it all assembled so as you see you've got it mounted to the back I used two number pan, number four pan head screws to go in here. Use a little bit of silicone adhesive just to kind of seal this up, weather tight it a little bit, uh, give it a little bit more adherence. But it's it's still pretty good connection as far as that to the chassis. So uh, that that's all pretty good. So happy with that. Um, this is a, a seven dB gain antenna uh, dipole. So I, I think I should give some really good oomph in the field to, to, as far as distance wise. So should be happy with that. Because one of the things I noticed is I'm still learning to fly uh, the SEMA X8 platform. And one of the things that I noticed on, on like the second trip out, it got a little bit out there, you know, only a couple hundred feet and fell from the sky because it lost signal. Uh, I know about the different signal settings and power and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it clearly got out of range for the the minuscule antenna which is i'm not even sure if it's a full quarter wave dipole anyway that was inside here so now i've replaced it with this so it should get some pretty good range out of it uh, as i experiment with it in the field i'll let you guys know how it goes i'll also put this model as well as um I put two of these models up on Thingiverse, so if you're interested in printing it, one is going to be for the larger size connector. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. And then I'll do one for the smaller size connector too, so whichever that you get. Uh, again, I was able to use a long screwdriver to come at this at an angle and put it in, so that, that actually worked okay. Uh, no big issues there. So. All in all, very happy with the build, and if you found this interesting, um, hey, the files will be out on Thingiverse. Don't be afraid to experiment with Tinkercad, and I think 3D printing and dro drone usage are something that really go hand in hand. So you'll probably see a little bit more, um, because I've got laser cutters, you know, the, the, the larger CO2 types. I've got CNC machines, a bunch of 3D printers, and, and so part of this journey is going to be making modifications to improve the video collection. Of, of the drone or the SEMA X8 platform and, and probably, you know, move on into a couple other platforms as I get used to this. So, hey, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. A lot more of this coming. Get any questions, hit me up in the comments below. See you in the next video. Cheers.